This is a copy of my brand new children's book, The Miraculous Busy Billy. And this story details where a bee named Billy um, is pretty much faced with a lot of criticism in his hive. Um, this is my dedication here to my grandmother and also to all the young uh, kids out there that are going through similar situations that Billy has gone through. And pretty much, um, he has been able to develop and maintain a strong spiritual connection with the Most High, which he has joked and mocked for. Um, but it's by way of this connection, when the beaver hive is in trouble, it's Billy who has to step in to save the day. Um, and he does that by, like I said, asking the angels to forgive everyone in his, beef, in his beehive. Um, and he also brings others to spirituality as, as well to pray just as he's done. So I feel this is a great book that will encourage and inspire children to continue to be in their most authentic selves and being faithful and obedient to the most high when faced with adversity. This is a great and positive read for your children, um, a great way to introduce spirituality to him to them. So make sure you go ahead and check out my book. It's available on Amazon for purchase via my website and my YouTube. Thank you, and I hope you and your kids enjoy. Be blessed. My book, Steps Towards Reinventing Yourself, is available now on Amazon. Check link below in description box and community board. Hello, my divine kings and queens. I am back to do another video. For a lot of you, God really had to take you out of your element. And what I mean by taking you out of your element, I mean getting you away from what you was used to, for, from what was familiar to you. You understand what I'm saying? Because he was trying to get you to see in more ways than one that who you was around wasn't for you. And see, energy is potent. So you have to understand something without you even opening up your mouth. People can sense like how you move. People can sense who you are based on your energy. They can sense your spirit. And see, you're around a lot of people around a lot of bad, tainted spirits. You understand what I'm saying? People who did not know themselves. People who really had it out for you. You understand? And see, what they didn't realize is you were a gift. You were a gift. And by you being backed by the Most High, that 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 ties you into unlimited an unlimited supply of resources of opportunities so whenever someone comes around you or someone like i say is blessed to be in your life you help them but what he was trying to get you to see was you was helping the wrong people and it left you drained it left you down it left you in a mind state of like i said being in confusion you know, not loving yourself um, really traumatized you. A lot of people did because of the disrespect that they served to you. The disrespect in creating environments to set you up to be mocked, to be judged, to be looked down upon. These people had to sit on the outside looking in, witnessing your spiritual glow and come up. When God was leading you out of the darkness to come into the light, you danced with him. You wasn't, you know, like I said, afraid to move when he, when he told you to move. You wasn't afraid to go where he told you to go and take those chances because you knew that he was leading you. And you know that anywhere that the Most High leads you is going to place you in a better position than where you was at before. God told you dance through those trials and tribulations. Dance through those uh low moments and periods of your life dance through those struggles because you're about to dance through success too you about to dance right into success you about to dance right into a loving partnership and union you about to dance right into your new beginning you understand what i'm saying and when you get the choice to sit it out or dance i hope you dance i hope you dance put yourself on up whenever one door closes another one opens god blessed you god blessed you like i said for 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 not only for you to step into a new beginning but for several doors to open up for you and all he was telling you to do, all you got to do is just walk through them. You dance through the struggle already. You dance through the trials and tribulations. You dance through the betrayals. You dance through the hurt. 
People couldn't respect you for who you were. They couldn't, like I said, because they were, they didn't love themselves. They didn't know who they was. You understand what I'm saying? And what I'm getting is um, that movie Italian job, right? Where everybody had a heist. They had this heist that they was trying to pull off. And you noticed how everyone said, okay, when we pull this off, when we get this amount of money or whatever the case may be, this is what I'm going to get. Everyone knew what they wanted to get. But the person who snaked all of them to take them all out and take their money, right? When they went back to go see, you know, or or like I said, to go back to try to get back what it is that this person had stole from from them, they looked into the house or something like that, and they saw where he literally got everything of which everybody said that they was going to get when they stepped into the money. So if it was a house, it was a, a surround system, a speaker, whatever the case may be, he got all of that. So he didn't get anything that was original, anything that he came up with. He got everything that everybody else said that they was going to get. These are the type of people that you was around. And not only that, another movie that came to me was um, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. How Elsmorella, Elsmorella def, uh, defended, um, was it Quasimodo? Yeah, Quasimodo. And you know, a lot of people, like I said, looked at him like he was a monster. You know, they perceived him to be monster, a hideous monster. Um, they didn't want to be associated with him. And in the end, it was him that saved everybody. And so there's a, a scene where Elsmerelda reaches out her hand and she said, come, come with me. It's okay. And you see how he comes out all, like I say, nervous, you know, like, are you sure? Like, come out myself, like no cloth, no nothing to hide my face, my, my back or anything like that. Just come out as I am. They're going to be scared of me. And they wasn't, they received them. Because see, when God takes you somewhere and people can see you for your spirit, see you for what you possess on the inside, like I said, far from, from what these people was able to do you, everything had to be about uh, a, a physical look, the aesthetic, the materialistic, the tangible. You didn't vibrate on the same level like these people did. That's why, like I said, you was alienated and you was outcasted. But little do people know, if you was not, like I said, strong enough to get through that, you wouldn't have been here today. So now everybody coming back, trying to wash their hands, trying to, you know, like I said, renege and wash their hands and be like, oh, you know, I ain't go around there and, and I didn't, I ain't say nothing and, and I ain't do this, but they ain't stick up for you either. They participated in it too. Walk away so that I can lift the veil. And when I lift, and when that veil gets lifted, these people are gonna be looked at for who they truly are. And now it's like the people who once participated or laughed at whatever environment of whatever setting that these people created for you to be joked, for you to be mocked. Like I said, they already knew that they was gonna crucify Jesus. It wasn't enough to let them just bear the cross, bear his own cross that they was gonna nail him to. What they did. They put a crown of thorns on his head, tortured him. Knowing that they was leading him to his death. Knowing that that was what the outcome was going to be. People didn't know how hard it was for you. Did not know that the things that they did brought you down to your very knees and broke your spirit. They didn't bet and count on God leading you out of the darkness. That they buried you in. That strong spirit that you possess within you allowed you to dance through the trials and tribulations, allowed you to dance through the sideway glances, allowed you to dance through the heartache and through the pain, allowed you to dance through those terminations, allowed you to dance through those delays, through those losses, through those defeats, allowed you to dance through the chaos, through the calamity, through the destruction. He said, come with me. Come with me. I'm, I'm about to take you to a place. You grab his hand so he can take you to where it is that he wanted you to be. You understand what I'm saying? Like they didn't, you, you know, that strong spirit that you possess within you, it allowed you to dance through a lot of things uh, and through a lot of situations that people placed you in. Now, when that veil gets lifted and people can see who they truly are, you're gonna have to pray for these people because see, now what people are doing is they're looking back on it and they're saying, they're not taking accountability for them participating or for them adding their two cents or for them laughing at it, right? But they'll back up and look at the person who initiated or brought up your name or created that environment and say, well, 
we looking at them now, but I'm saying like, what, what made you bring, what, what, what made you do that in the, to begin with? What made you do that in the first place? That's how they being looked at. What, what made you start that or say that in the first place? A lot of people thought they was coming up on you and see, this is what I'm talking about. Why you have to, like I say, by you not even doing anything, God is coming through and he is ushering you into your new beginning and he's serving justice and he's calling judgment on these people. Because, see, this is the thing. This is why he told you, listen, relinquish control. Walk away. I know what I'm doing. I need you level-headed. And see, what's happening is, like, the test for these people was to stop doing what they're doing and for them to come clean about what they had done to you. But since they didn't want to be exposed, God exposed them. And he put a lot of your enemies to shame. And they don't know what to say. Because, see, what they used to say is not applicable to you now in your new state, in your new beginning, in your new cycle. Whenever one door closes, God makes another open. Just promise me you'll give faith a fighting chance. Kings and queens. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you dance. Pull yourself on up. Couldn't keep you down. Because God is walking with you. So how does it make sense to go against something that could have been long lasting? Huh? That could have been everlasting, long lasting. If, if, if a come up is what people wanted. All people had to do, like I said, if it was worth your grain of salt, God said they would have been experiencing that spiritual glow up with you. But whosoever is not in your life in this season, as I'm taking you to where I'm taking you, where you need to be, where you deserve to be, where you should have been a long time ago. If they're not here, they're not meant to be here. Leave them where they at. Because everybody earned their stance in your life. Even if they're not in your life, they earn that because of what they did, what they said, and how they treated you. Now you kept being true and kept coming through and kept loving these people from a space in your heart. But you was loving empty, tainted souls and spirits. Putting all your resources and all your love into a deep, dark abyss, a pit, a bottomless pit. It was never going to you were never going to reap the returns that you were that you were seeking. Not from these people. You couldn't get it from these people. They were incapable. But what God, what God say, if they knew that, that they was incapable, that incapability should have led them towards their healing. And while they were healing, they should have left you alone. But they didn't want to do that. It came for you in the worst way. And all you wanted was peace and happiness in your life. You wanted to be left alone. After everything that you had been through, it almost cost you your life. But you see how God loves you so because you gave it to him. He already had plans for you, but because you called out to him and you gave it to him, he wasn't going to let you go out like that. Whenever one door closes, he made several more open. And all he wanted from you, all what he expected from you was what? Promise me you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, just grab my hand and let me take you to where I, I promise you where, where I'm about to take you. It's going to be peace and happiness there. I promise you where I'm about to take you. People are going to love you for your spirit, for what you possess on the inside. And they're going to value that so much knowing that that come down a dozen. Like I said, you was a rare gem. That's what people are realizing. You're a rare gem because your mindset is rare. Your behaviors, your, your mannerisms, it's rare in a world where everybody trying to be like everybody and everybody trying to be accepted and everybody is going for the aesthetic. When you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you dance. Pull yourself on up. Didn't let, like I said, these people whose hearts was tainted and bitter turn you into a cruel person.
you did things for people and they act like they were so shame of you, so shame to be seen with you, so so shame to be associated. Like they had to come up with lies because they didn't want to take accountability. They had to come up with lies so that they would look better because they didn't want to be judged. No one around you could accept you for your spirit. But God reached out his hand. He said, look, well, I'm about to take you. People ain't going to see you that way. It's just around here in this environment, in this setting, where you can no longer grow or manifest because you've outgrown these people. You've outgrown this setting. You've outgrown this particular group of people. You said, I'm going to lean in on my faith. I'm going to take a risk. And I'm going to go where you lead me. And I'm going to go with the spiritual flow. And that's what led to your spiritual glow up. You're a totally different person. And when that opportunity comes back around for you to snake these people, like how they did you, you know that you're healed because you say, you know what, what I look like utilizing my receipt. The thing is, these people are who they are. They were already routed to be who they are. They have to get on their own healing journey and path. Why would you block your own destiny and blessings, right? By trying to seek revenge and retaliation against these people when this is what their purpose and their mission was. To understand that you don't do that to everybody. There's a way to handle things. There's a way to do things. To reach down within yourself. And do some, some true, a deep cleanse. And some inner work to heal. By encountering you, that's what was going to lead them on their healing journey. So you understood that. But you still yet had free will. But you said No. It's not going to be worth it, me utilizing my resources, me forfeiting my destiny and my blood, because all that's going to do is come back on me. You did what you were supposed to do. Jill Scott seen her friend and what that was. Why did I get married? She, she said, you know, I thought I was going to beat that. But all honestly, all I feel, I feel I just want to pray for you. They have not done the inner work. And they're not healed. But see, the thing is, they forgot that you were somebody's child. In the midst of them, like I say, trying to project off on you, their insecurities. They forgot you were somebody's child going up against you because they didn't want you to step up in something because they felt like you were unworthy. They forgot they was going up against somebody's child. And I ain't talking about your, your in the physical. I'm talking about in the spiritual. And God don't play by his children. He ain't no absentee father. He don't half it. He don't get missing. He ain't wishy-washy. He ain't in and out. It don't matter what you do, what your sins are, what your background, disobedience, obedience, lies, truth. He going to step for you and he going to let people know this is mine right here. This is my child. I don't care what you say. I don't care what they do. This ain't the one. And everybody said, like, well, well, what is it that God sees so much about you? These are parents. These are people who got children themselves. What you mean? What it is that God sees? As a parent, you're never supposed to give up on your children. I don't care what they do, how they do it. You're never supposed to give up on your children. So, 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 so what is it that people question is as to why God goes so hard for you? Say why he keep lifting you up and rising you up when people knock you down. Why he keeps rising you up from the ashes, lifting you up. Taking you and leading you out of the darkness. Into the light. Because who deserves to live like that? in survival mode, traumatized. No one deserves to live like that. Not someone, like I say, with a kindred, beautiful spirit like you. Everybody needs to see that. There's people out there who deserves you, deserves your energy, deserve to be in your life. It's just not, it's none of these people that you left behind. If it was something so wrong with you, why go out, why, why people had to go out their way to try to exploit it? Why were they so pressed? Why, why, why come up with all these elaborate schemes and plots and plans to want to get back up in your life or take from you or humiliate you? All because you didn't want to deal with people no more. You left them behind. But they earned that. You did what you were supposed to do. They did what they were supposed to do. That's why I say you wasn't going to be in a position of blocking your blessings and your destiny, your forward progression and movement, messing up your future, trying to snake people how they snaked you. And the opportunity is going to present itself because something's going to come back around if you want it. Because you gave it to God. Because you gave it to God. Because you gave it to God. And you went with the spiritual flow. You experiencing a spiritual glow up right now.
And there are a lot of people, like I said, who were really fighting you still to this day, nail and tooth, because they don't want you to step into what it is that God has for you. But it's not their choice. It's not their decision. God already had plans to get you here because of what you had been through. I hope you still feel small when you stand by the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope another opens. Promise me you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance. That strong spirit that lives within you that allows you to dance through those trials and tribulations, through the shame, through the guilt, through the hurt, through the losses, through poverty, through health issues, everything. It's that same strong spirit that's gonna urge you and that's urging you to dance right, right all into this success it's that same strong spirit that's, that wants you to dance with them. Dance with them in your success, abundance, love, peace, and happiness. Because all those doors that closed in your past, they were supposed to be closed for a reason. So that God can open up new doors. So you don't care about trying to get people back how they got you. Because all you're focused on is the new. New beginnings, new growth, new blessings, new people, new cycle, new whatever, just new. And when I conquer that phase, I'm on to the next phase. I'm on to the next phase, new, 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 new. We don't hate anyone. We are forgiven, but we will never forget. Because people really turned it up a notch all because you was different. They watch you for anyone, like I say, as a chosen one, like I say, this is we on a spiritual grid. It's routed to go that way. Because people are pulling, they're calling, they know something is coming. Because you're fighting through. You've danced through enough. You've danced through the worst. Now you about to dance and bask in all this glory, victory, and success that God is bringing your way. He's leading you out of the darkness into the light. People traumatize and broke you really bad. These people can really do things and in the midst of them doing things, they don't even understand how dirty and low down it came out. And some know and they don't care. And that's why I tell you, you got to protect yourself out here. But every door that ever closed in your life, it was supposed to close because... God had to lead you and get you out. People was cutting for your very life. And, you know, it's all because, like I say, those those attachments that people had to them. It's also because of people not being able to heal and do that inner work to self-reflect on, hey, you know, I got some issues. I need to heal. I need this person's fault. Ain't that person's fault. Ain't nobody's fault. It, it's... I just need to focus on me. I need to heal. And people didn't want to do that. And they messed up, like I said, um, any position, having any position or say so in your life. Because you were good people. You are a good person. You were on the wrong people, given to the wrong people. So he had to get you away to save you. Then to cleanse you off, to make you whole, to vindicate you. And to bless you. I hope you still feel small standing beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope another opens. Promise me you'll give faith a fighting chance. And wherever God leads you, wherever he tells you to go, when you get the choice, to sit it out or dance. Wipe those tears from your eyes because you overcame. Stop beating yourself up and feeling down on yourself because you're beautiful and you're handsome and you made it and you're strong. You're young, there's so much life ahead of you. 
So dance. I hope you dance. Put your stuff on up. Because you deserve it. So move. Be strong. Hug yourself. Tell yourself the day that you love yourself. It's a beautiful day outside. Okay? And breathe. Because it's okay. You safe. You can go into the light. Everybody ain't screwed up like these past people were in your life. The veil is being lifted as to who you dealt with. And now people know why. <laughs> You was just the, like you was on your on the brink. They understand. What's understood ain't got to be explained because the veil's been lifted. See, as long as people didn't know, people thought they could keep getting away with lies, getting away with the cruelty, the disrespect that they dished out to you. And I'm telling you, like I say in that movie, A Family That Prays, she did all that thinking she was going to be a Cartwright. You know what I'm saying? She had ample an, a, a opportunity to stop doing that, to cut that affair off and do right by her husband. Didn't want to do it. See, when people think that they're going to do something and they, just, they know they got it in the bag and then they don't go the way that they want it to go, then that bell gets lifted as to the environments, the, the settings, like I said, that they created, that they established, that they was the ringleader of. Groups that they don't put together, plots and plans that they was behind, lies that they spread it. To someone who was supposed to be family, someone who was supposed to be a friend, someone who was supposed to be a lover or a colleague, they made you out to be a public enemy number one. But because you relinquished control, because you went with the spiritual flow, you're experiencing a spiritual glow. You got your mind back regulated. Once you got, once you got your mind back regulated, got your life regulated. Because you keep God first before everything that it is that you do. You understand who's leading you and who's guiding you. He's your mentor. He's your father. He's never going to allow you or set you up for failure. That's why I say it don't matter what it is that people take from you or they think that they're getting a lick up on you or whatever the case may be. Like I said, for that one little come up or for that one little thing that people was able to snake you out of or get over you or say about you, they're realizing, like, was it worth it? Because seeing that movie also, like I say, Temptations is my, not like I say, my favorite example to use. People wanted to use manipulation, wanted to use lies, thinking that they knew it all, thinking they player, 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 thinking that they the hottest thing since sliced bread, thinking that they know it all, thinking that they know it all, they got it all in the bag, they ain't got to listen to nobody, they ain't got to heed to the warnings. What she said, oh, you do you know how much I had to pay for studio time? Do you know you didn't have to pay? They didn't want to give you nothing. They didn't want to give you nothing. They didn't want to get you nothing from the Taco Bellis. They didn't want to get you nothing from the dollar menu. They didn't want to give you anything and they thought it was funny. But want to take everything from you and then some. Keep you enslaved. But they want nobody else to have you. Want to look down on you. Want to shame you. To lift themselves up. What did they get out of that? What do you get out of doing that? When you didn't have to do it. And now when the veil gets lifted. Now people are looking at you for how mentally deranged. And messed up and screwed up and cruel you are. I mean, the, 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 the facts is right there. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. People can try to deny it. Don't want to take accountability. But it's right there. Why do it? People will be more than willing to accept the opportunity to snake you. And come back in your life and screw up everything that it is that you've worked so hard for. Even your inner healing. But see, when the opportunity presents itself to you, this is what I'm saying about how that shows in the picture character. You say, no, the other opportunities there, but I'm not going to sit up here and do that for what? I'm not going to get no fulfillment out of that. Just to see a look on their face, just to see them down and out, how they had me No, I am happy. This is how I show my gratitude to the most high for giving me this opportunity. I'm not going to squander it. You gave me an opportunity at life anew. That's what I'm focused on. Not trying to take that to rub up in somebody's face. Not trying to take that and use that to snake somebody the same way they snake me. Because I've healed. 
And like I said, in that movie, she thought she was doing something. And now, in that movie, she had to sit as commodes flushed above her. And she's very well going to have to hear commodes flushed to the end of her days. She had to sit and watch The Temptations from her uh, TV screen. Not being there or at least in the vicinity as their manager. She had to watch it. And she heard commodes flush. So you take that how how you take that however that's about to go. People on the outside looking in that witnessed, like I said, it was laughing as you was going through the spiritual flow. They ain't laughing no more now that you got that spiritual glow up. Because it ain't nothing to laugh at. But the damage has already been done. God had to really come through and shake some things up to heal you, to get you back together. Because you didn't deserve that and you wasn't prepared for that. It started, like I said, with those who was closest to you, who's supposed to protect you, who was sitting up here manipulating you, trying to keep you in this stuck mindset, trying to keep you in it in it in lack impoverished. What's that other movie? Um, is it Tangled? Where the mother uh wasn't even her real mother. She came from a royal bloodline and had powers within her hair that allowed that lady to stay youthful. People wanted to keep you as an energy, like I said, an energy resource. They wanted to keep you tied to them because of the benefits that they get off of you. You know, you know what I'm saying? But no one, no one wanted to feed back into you. God say, no, enough of, of my child being drained, of them being used, and then you're acting like you can't even acknowledge what it is that they've done and who they've been to you. So you was giving to people who wasn't even acknowledging or being appreciative of what it is you was doing for them. So it's, 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 it's like they were time wasters. Wasting your time, wasting your resources. What I said, a black bottomless pit. They weren't even telling people all the things that you had done for them. The mountains that you had moved for them. How good of a person you had been to them. Too busy trying to knock you down. Too busy trying to compete. Too busy trying to look down on you. It almost broke you to the point of no return. You said, I don't deserve that. I don't know what's wrong with you, but I didn't do it to you. I came in to heal you. I came in to be a good friend to you. I came in to try to love you. I came in here to do my job. And you're making it unbearable in hell for me. But you know what? I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you to God. I'm going to leave you to God, and I'm going to give it to God. And I'm going to surrender, and I'm going to go with the spiritual flow. And now I'm experiencing a spiritual glow. And that's why I'm married to the little lamb. This is why snow. Play with it. Whenever one door closes, God made another open. Just promise me you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or then. So thank him for all of that. Um, thank him for getting you out and thank him for leading you out of the darkness into the light because you deserve everything that's coming your way. And until next time, you stay prayed up and be blessed. I love you.